For the consideration of future audiences, we'd like to ask you to refrain from discussing the particulars of our show after you have left the premises. We'd also like you to please turn off or silence all cellular devices, as you might miss something if they suddenly activate. Thank you very much. Enjoy the show. It uh, wasn't the right kind. 
I went on to another dump, but that wasn't any good either. Practically my whole day wasted. My God, I'm half frozen. Ah, the car was skidding like anything, and the snow was coming down pretty thick. What you bet on us? No luck by tomorrow. Dear, I do hope not. Filling the pipes don't freeze. We'll have to keep the central heating well soaked up. Not too good. I wish they'd send a cook along me. Not got any too much. Oh, I do so hope everything goes well at first. First impressions are so important. Is everything ready? Nobody has arrived yet, I suppose. Yeah, thank goodness. I think everything's in order. Mrs. Barlow looked it early. Afraid of the weather, I suppose. What a nuisance these daily women are. And that leaves everything on your shoulders. And yours? This is a partnership. So long that you don't ask me to cook. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, we've got lots of tins in case we slow down. You, Charles, do you think it's going to be all right? Got cold feet, have you? Are you sorry now you didn't sell a place when your aunt left it to you instead of having this mad idea of running a guest house? No, I'm not. I love it. And talking of a guest house, just look at that. Ah, pretty good, what? It's a disaster. Don't you see? You left out an S. Monkwell instead of Monkswell. Good Lord. So I did. <laughs> However, did I come to do that button? Doesn't really matter, does it? Monkwell, just as good as a name. You're a disgrace. Give him snow for the central heating. Across that icy yard? Ah, shall I bank it up for the night now? No, you don't do that until 10 or 11 o'clock at night. How appalling. Hurry up. Someone may arrive in any minute now. And uh, you've got all the rooms worked out? Yes. Mrs. Boyle, front for post room, and Major Metcalf, blue room, Miss Casewell, east room, and Mr. Red, oak room. I wonder what all these people will be like. Aren't we got rent in advance? Yeah. No, I don't think so. We're rather mugs at this game. They bring luggage. If they don't pay, we hang on to the luggage. It's quite simple. I can't help thinking we ought to have taken a correspondent course in hotel keeping. We're sure to get had in some way. Their luggage may just be bricks wrapped up in newspaper. And where should we be then? They all wrote from very good addresses. That's what servants with forged references do. Some of these people, they, they be criminals hiding from the police. I don't care what they are, so long as they pay us seven guineas every week. You're such a wonderful woman of business, Molly. And according to Scotland Yard, the crime took place at 24 Calvert Street, Penn. The murdered woman was a Mrs. Maureen Lyon. In connection with the murder, the police are anxious to interview a man seen in the vicinity wearing a dark overcoat, light scarf, and soft felt hat. <laughs> Protests are warned against ice-bound roads. The heavy snow is expected to continue. And throughout the country, there will be a certain freezing, particularly at points on the north and northeast coast of Scotland. How do you do? Thanks so much. <laughs> Weather is simply awful. <laughs> <laughs> My taxi gave up at your gate. Wouldn't attempt the drive, no sporting instinct. <laughs> Are you Mrs. Bolston? My name's Red. How do you do, Mr. Red? You know, you're not as tall as I pictured you. I've been thinking of you as a retired general's widow, Indian Army. Now, I thought you'd be terrifically grim and then celebration that the whole place would be simply crammed with bizarreries, perhaps. It's dead, it's heavenly. Quite heavenly. Lovely proportions, that's a fake. Ah, oh, this table's genuine. I'm simply going to love this place. Have you got any wax flowers or birds of paradise? I'm afraid not. What a pity! <laughs> <laughs> well, what about a sideboard? A purple plummy mahogany sideboard with great solid card fruits on it? Yes, we yeah, have, in the dining room. In here? I must see it. Oh, it's flowers. Do come in, 
Absolutely perfect real bedrock respectability. <laughs> but why do the way with the centre mahogany table? Little tables just spoil the effect. We thought guests would prefer them. This is my husband. How do you do? Terrible weather, isn't it? Takes one back to Dickens and Scrooge and that irritating tiny dip so bogus. <laughs> of course, Mrs. Ralston, you're absolutely right about the little tables. I was being carried away from my feeling for period. If you had a mahogany dining table, you'd have to have the right family around it. Stern, handsome father with a beard, prolific, faded mother, eleven children of assorted ages, <laughs> a grim governess, and somebody called uh, Paul Harriet, the poor relation who acts as a general dog's body and is very, very grateful for being given a good home. I'll take your suitcase upstairs for you. Oak room, did you say? Yes. I do hope that it's got a four poster with little chin's roses. <laughs> it hasn't. I don't believe your husband is going to like me. <laughs> How long have you been married, are you? Very much in love? We've been married just a year. Perhaps you'd like to go up and see your room. Ticked off. But I do so like knowing all about people. I mean, I think people are so madly interesting, don't you? Well, I suppose some are and some are not. No, I don't agree. I think they're all interesting because you never really know what anyone is like or what they are really thinking. For instance, you don't know what I'm thinking about now, do you? Not in the least. Cigarette? No, thank you. You see, the only people who really know what other people are like are artists, and they don't know why they know it. But if they're portrait painters, it comes out on the canvas. Are you a painter? No, I'm an architect. My parents, you know, baptized me Christopher in the hope that I would be an architect. Christopher Wren is good as halfway home. Actually, of course, everyone laughs about it and makes jokes about St. Paul's. However, who knows? I may yet have the last laugh. Chris Wren's prefab mess may yet go down in history. I'm going to like it here. I find your wife most sympathetic. Indeed. And really very beautiful. <laughs> Indeed, sir. There. Isn't that like an Englishwoman? Compliments always embarrass them. European women take compliments as a matter of course, but English women have all the feminine spirit crushed out of them. <laughs> by their husbands. <laughs> There's something very boorish about English husbands. Come up and see you, Ruth. Shall I? Just a little bit. Oh, 
Yes, I feel very young. Young? To be running an establishment of this kind, you can't have much experience. Well, there has to be a beginning for everything, hasn't there? I see. Okay, quite an experience. An old house? I hope you haven't got dry rot. Uh, certainly not. A lot of people don't know they have got dry rot until it's too late to do anything about it. The house is in perfect condition. <laughs> it could do with a coat of paint. You've got worm in this oak. This way, Major. This is my wife. How do you do? Absolute pleasure outside. I thought one time we should make it. So, I beg your pardon. If it goes on like this, I should say I'll have five or six weeks to go by the morning. Not seen anything like it since I was off leave in 1940. I'll take these upstairs for you. Which rooms did you say? The blue room and the rose room? Uh, no, I put Mr. Wren in the rose room. He liked the fall post so much. <laughs> so, it's Mrs. Boyle in the oak room and Major Metcalf in the blue room. Major! Sir! I can help you with your bath. I'm good. <laughs> Do you have much servants in forty years? We have quite a good local woman who comes in from the village. And what in your staff? No, in your staff. Just us. I see. <laughs> I understood this was a guest house in full running order. We're only just starting. I would have said that a proper staff of servants was essential for opening an establishment of this kind. I consider your advertisement was most misleading. May I ask why the only guest, along with Major Metcalf, that is? Oh no, there are several here. This weather too. A blizzard, no less. All very unfortunate. We couldn't very well foresee the weather. The north wind will blow, and it will bring snow. And what will the robin do then? Poor thing. <laughs> I adore nursery rhymes, don't you? Always so tragic and macabre. That's why children like them. May I introduce Mr. Red and Mrs. Boyle? <laughs> this is a very beautiful house, don't you think? I have come to the time in my life when the amenities of an establishment are much more important than its appearance. If I had not thought this to be a running concern, I should never have come here in the first place. Well, there's no obligation for you to remain here if you are not satisfied, Mrs. Boyle. No, no, I couldn't think of doing so. <laughs> if there has been any misapprehension, it would perhaps be better if you went elsewhere. I could bring up a taxi to return. The roads are not yet blocked. We've had so many applications for rooms that it shall be quite easy to fill your spot. In any case, we're raising our terms next month. No, no, I wouldn't think of leaving before I've tried what the place is like. You needn't think you can turn me out now. Perhaps you'll show me to my room, Mrs. Ralston. Certainly, Mrs. Boyd. <sighs> Tom, you're wonderful. <laughs> Perfectly horrible woman. I don't like her at all. I'd love to see you turn her out into the snow. Serve her right. <laughs> it's a pleasure. I've got to forego, I'm afraid. Oh, Lord, there's another of them. <laughs> come in, come in. Afraid my horse walked about half a mile down the road. Ran into a drift. Oh, let me take this. Any more stuff in the car? No, I travel light. <laughs> Glad to see you've got a good fire going. Uh, Mr. Wren? Miss. Oh, uh. Case one. My wife will be down in a minute. Oh, no, Marie. Got to get myself thawed out. Looks as though you're going to be snowed up here. Weather forecast says heavy falls expected. Motor swarms, etc. Hope you got plenty of provisions in. Oh, yes. My wife is an excellent manager. Anyways, we can always eat our heads. Right. Before we start eating each other. Ed. <laughs> Any news in the paper? Apart from the weather. 
Usual political crisis. Oh, yes, and a rather juicy murder. A murder? Oh, I like murder. <laughs> <laughs> they seem to think it was a homicidal mania. Strangled woman somewhere near Paddington. Sex maniac, I suppose. It doesn't say much, does it? <coughs> Police are anxious to interview a man seen in the vicinity of Culver Street at the time. Medium height, wearing a darkish overcoat, larger scarf, and soft felt hat. Police messages to this effect have been broadcast throughout the day. Useful description. Fit pretty well anyone, wouldn't it? When it says that the police are anxious to interview someone, is that a polite way of thinking that he is the murderer? Could be. Um, <clears throat> who was the woman who was murdered? Mrs. Lyon. Mrs. Maureen Lyon. Young or old? Doesn't say. Doesn't seem to have been robbery. I told you, sex maniac. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this is Miss Casewell, Molly, uh, my wife. How do you do? It's an awful night. Would you like to come up to your room? The water's hot if you'd like a bath. You're right, I would. Who could that be? 
probably the Culver Street murder. <laughs> oh, a thousand pardons, I am. Uh, Where am I? Uh, this is Moseswell <coughs> Manor Guest House, yeah? But what do you is good fortune? Man. What an answer to pray. A guest house and they charge yeah, horses. My Rolls Royce, alas, is running to a snow bridge. Blinding snow everywhere. I do not know where I am. I think perhaps I will freeze to death. I grab a small bag, I stagger through the snow, come across big iron gates. The habitation. I am safe. Twice I fall through the snow as I climb up your drive, but at last, I arrive. And immediately, despair turns to joy. You can let me have a room, yes? Uh-huh. Yes. It's rather small room, I'm afraid. Naturally, naturally. You have several other guests as well. We'd only just started this place as a guest house today, and we're rather new at it. Charmer. Charmer. Ah, uh, hi. What about your luggage? That is of no consequence. I've locked the car very securely. But wouldn't it be better to get it in? No, oh, no, I assure you, on a night such as this, there will be no thieves abroad. And as for my needs, they are very simple. I have all that I require within that small bag. Yes. All that I need. You'd better get thoroughly warm. I'll see about your room. I'm afraid it's a rather cold room because the face is north, but not like others are occupied. You have several other guests then. Well, there's Mrs. Boyle, and Major Metcalf, and Miss Casewell, and a young man called Christopher Wren, and now you. Yes, the unexpected guest. The guest you did not invite. The guest who arrived from nowhere. After this storm. It sounds quite dramatic, does it not? Who am I? You do not know. Where do I come from? You do not know. Me? I'm the man of mystery. <laughs> <laughs> but, but, I can leave this now. I can give the picture. From now on, there will be no more arrivals. And no departures either. By tomorrow, perhaps, even no that day, we are completely cut off from civilization. <coughs> no butcher, no baker, no milkman, no postman, no daily papers. No one and nothing but ourselves. That is our I, you could not sue me better. Oh, my name, by the way, is Pagliacini. Oh, yes, ours is Ralston. Mr. and Mrs. Ralston. And this is Monks from Manor Fiesta. <laughs> <laughs> Good. <laughs> oh, perfect. Much 
larger place all together with a comfortable writing room and bridge and other amenities. Regular old Tammy's delight. I beg your pardon. I mean, yes. I quite see what you mean. No, indeed. I shan't stay here long. No. <laughs> no, I don't suppose you will. <laughs> Snow's rather lovely, isn't it? 
So peaceful, so pure. It makes one forget things. It doesn't make me forget. How fierce you sound. I was thinking. What sort of thinking? Ice on a bedroom jug. Chill planes raw and bleeding. One thin ragged blanket. And a child shivering. Cold and fear. My dear, it sounds too, too grim. What is it? A novel. You didn't know I was a writer, did you? Are you? Sorry to disappoint you. Actually, I'm not. Young people seem to think that no one is 
educated but yourself. I meant this friend. His name is Christopher. His parents called him that because they'd hoped to be an architect. And he is, or nearly one, so it turned out all right. <laughs> Sounds a fishy story to me. I should make some inquiries if I were you. What do you know of him? Just as much as I know about you, Mrs. Boyle, which is that you're both paying us seven guineas a week. It's all I really need to know, isn't it? And all that concerns me. It doesn't matter to me whether I like my guests or I don't. <laughs> <laughs> you are young and inexperienced. And you should welcome advice from someone more knowledgeable than yourself. And what's this for? for him? What about you? You weren't expecting him, were you? To turn away a bona fide traveller is against the law, Mrs. Boyle. You should know that. All I'm saying is that this pair of a genie, or whatever he calls himself, seems to me. You talk of the devil, dear Arabians. Here he is. Ha ha. <laughs> I came in a pinto. Like this. <laughs> Only the other one gives me if I do not want them to. I find that very amusing. Indeed. <coughs> there was a young lady. Well, I must be following my letters. I'll see. My charming hostess looks upset. What is it, dear lady? Well, everything's rather difficult this morning because of the snip. Yes, so makes things difficult, does it not? <coughs> Otherwise, it makes them easy. Yes, very easy. I don't know what you mean. No. I suspect there is quite a bit that you do not know. I think, for one, you do not know much about running a guest house. I dare say we don't, but we need to make a go of it. Bravo! Bravo! I'm not such a very bad cook. Without doubt, an enchanting cook. May I give you a word of warning, Miss Trotson? You and your husband must not be too trusting of your other guests. Have you references with any of them? Is that usual? I thought people just, just came. It is advisable to know a little of the people who sleep on the earth. Take me, for instance. I turn up saying my God is overturned and it's not right. What do you know of me? Nothing at all. I could be a thief, a robber, a fugitive from justice, a madman, even a murderer. Who? You see? Perhaps you know just as little of your other guests as well. Well, as far as Mrs. Poole goes. The drawing room, as far as you want to sit in. I shall write my letters in here. Allow me to put the fire for you. Miss Ross, is your husband about? It seems the pipes in the downstairs cloak are frozen. You dear, what an awful day. First the police, and now the pipes. Police! The police, did you say? They may not. Just now, to say they're sending a sergeant out here, I do not think I'll ever get here. Ah, the ruddy cold floor and half stone, and the problem. Hello, is something the matter? I hear the police on the way here. Why? Oh, that's all right. Why, no one can get through with this. Why, the drifts must be five feet deep, and the roads are all backed up. Nobody will get here today. Excuse me, Mr. Pavicini, may I put these down? Sergeant 
Good afternoon. Good afternoon, Sergeant. You're too young. Not quite as young as I look, man. But terribly hearty. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> We'll stow your skis away under the stairs. Excuse me, Mr. Austin, but now you've got to force me to get out. <laughs> She's very attractive, don't you think so? I always think that policemen are very attractive. No brains. You can see that at a glance. Hello. <laughs> Hello. Miss Ross. This gentleman is dead. Quite dead. It was all right about a half an hour ago. Life's gone down the wind still, I suppose. So, we're quite cut off now. <laughs> quite cut off. That's funny, isn't it? I don't see anything to laugh at. No, indeed. Ah, it's a private joke of my own. Hist. The sleuth is returned. <laughs> Now, you tell the business, Mr. Ralston. Mr. Ralston, do you want to see us alone? If so, we can go into the library. It's not necessary, sir. You'll see everybody's presence. Race to the table. By all means. Thank you. Now, do hurry up and tell us. What have we done? Done? I hope it's something that kind, Mr. Ralston. It's something quite different. It's more matter of police protection, you understand me? Police protection? It's related to the death of Mrs. Lyon. Mrs. Maureen Lyon, 24 Corbett Street, from Berlin West 2 who was murdered yesterday in the 15th Institute. You may have heard about the case? Yes, I heard it on the wires. The woman who was strangled? That's right, madam. The first one to know is your acquaintance, Mrs. Lyon. Never heard of her. You may not have known her the name of Lyon. She had a police record and a free principal on file, so able to identify with her difficulty. The real name was Maureen Stanley. Her husband was a farmer. John Stanley was under Long Ridge Farm. That's very far. Long Ridge Farm? Wasn't that where those children? Yes, the Longridge Farm case. Three children. That's right, miss. The Corrigans. Two boys and a girl. Up for the court in care protection. The home was found for them with Mr. and Mrs. Stanley at Longridge Farm. One of the children subsequently died as a result of criminal neglect of persistent ill treatment. Kate made a loose sensation at the time. But it was horrible. The stag presents a term to imprisonment. Stanley died in prison. Mrs. Stanley served her sentence and was duly released. Yesterday's isolation was found strained by 24 Corporal Street. Who did it? I'm coming to that, madam. A notebook was put up near the scene of the crime. Written in that notebook were two addresses. One was 24 Corporal Street. The other was Monkswell Manor. What? <laughs> yes, sir. That's why Super didn't call me on the scene's information from Scotland Yard, but a pair of like a man to you. And find out there's any connection between this house or anyone in this house, in the Longridge Farm case. There's nothing, there's absolutely nothing. It uh, must be a coincidence. Superintendent Corbyn doesn't think it's a coincidence, sir. <clears throat> You'll come himself into one angle possible. Under the work missions, as I can see, he's having instructions to get all particulars of everyone in the house, to pull back to buy a phone, to pull measures high for fit to ensure the safety of the household. Safety? What danger does he think we're in? Good Lord, he's not suggesting that. Someone's going to be killed here. I don't want to frighten the ladies, but frankly, yes, that's the idea. But why? That's what we want from you. But the whole thing is crazy. Yes, sir. It's because it's crazy that it's dangerous. Nonsense. I must say it seems a bit far-fetched. I think it's wonderful. <laughs> <laughs> is there anything that's happened to you, Sergeant? Yes, Mr. Foster. Below the two dresses was written three blind mice. And on the dead woman's body was a paper with this is the first written on it, the drawing of three little mice and a bar of music. The music was to the tune of the nursery line of three blind mice. You know how it goes. Three blind mice. Three blind mice. See how they run. They boop. Oh, it's horrible. <laughs> there were three children and one died? Yes. The others, boy of a left. And uh, what happened to the other two? The girl was adopted by someone. We haven't been able to trace her present whereabouts. The elder boy would now be about 22. Deserted from the army and hasn't been heard from since. According to the army psychologist who definitely a schizophrenic, a bit queer in the head, to say. And they think that it is he who killed Mrs. Lyon, Mrs. Stanley. Yes. And he is a homicidal maniac and he will turn up here and try to kill someone. But why? That's what we're going to find out from you. 
As the superintendent states that there must be some connection. Now, you state, sir, that you yourself have no connection with this long bridge farm case. No one. And saying this for you, madam? No, no, I have no connection. What about servants? We haven't any servants. Mm. <laughs> Never mind. <laughs> uh, would you mind, Sergeant Trotter, if I went to the kitchen? I'll be there if you want to. That's quite all right, Mr. Ralston. Now, can I have all your names, please? This is quite ridiculous. We are merely staying in a kind of hotel. We've only just arrived yesterday. We've got nothing to do with this place. You had a clear advance, then? You booked your rooms here ahead? Well, yes. All except Mr. Paravicini. I call over the Miss Nogre. I see. What's well, I'm meeting at? Since anyone has been following you around, I used to know very well you were coming here. Now, there's just one thing I want to know, and I want to know quick. Which one of you is it with some connection with that business at Longbridge Farm? I'll be very sensible, you know. One of you is in danger. Deadly danger. I've got to know which one that is. All right. That's the one I want. You first, sir. He's received a from one S by accident. Mr. Hari. Para. Para. But, my dear inspector, I know nothing but nothing of what you speak of. You are a stranger in this country and know nothing of these local affairs of bygone years. Mrs. Boyle, really, I. I consider it an impertinence. Why should I have anything to do with such. with this distressing business? Miss. Casewell. Leslie Casewell. I never heard of Longridge Farm and I know nothing about it. You, sir. Metcalf. Major. <laughs> I read about the case in the papers at the time. I was stationed in Edinburgh. No personal knowledge. And you? Christopher Ed. I was a mere child at the time. I don't remember even hearing about it. And that's all you have to say? Any of you? Well, if one of you gets murdered, you're yourself to blame. Now this is supposed to go around the house. My dears, how melodramatic. <laughs> He's very attractive, isn't he? <laughs> I adore the police. So stern and hard boiled. Quite a thrill, this whole business. Three blind mice. How does the tune go? Really, Mr. Wren? <laughs> Don't you like it? But it's a signature tune. The signature tune of the murderer. Just fancy what a kick he must be getting out of it. Melodramatic rubbish. I don't believe a word of it. Ah, uh, but just wait, Mrs. Boyle, till I creep up behind you and you feel my hand on your throat. Hold your knee. Hold your knee. That's not a joke at all. Oh, but it is. That's just what it is. The madman's joke. That's just what makes it so deliciously macabre. <laughs> If you could just see your faces. <laughs> a singularly ill-mannered and neurotic young man. Where's Charlotte? Taking our policeman on a conducted tour of the house. Your friend, the architect, has been behaving in the most abnormal manner. Young fellows seem pretty heavy nowadays. Dare say he'll grow out of it. Nerves. I have no patience for people who say they have nerves. I haven't got any nerves. No. <laughs> Perhaps that's just the you, Miss Boyle. I beg your pardon? I think you were one of the magistrates of the bench at the time. In fact, you were the one responsible for so 
sending those three children to Long Ridge Farm. Really, Major Metcalf, I can hardly be held responsible. We have reports from welfare workers. The farm people seem very nice, and the children seem to have a healthy, out of doors sort of life. Kicks, blows, starvation, and a thoroughly vicious couple. They were very civilly spoken. Yes, I was right. It was you. One tries to do a public duty, and all one gets is abuse. <laughs> oh, oh, you must forgive me. I find this all very amusing. <laughs> I try myself pain. <laughs> Since when? Major Metcalf tried to just after you arrived. 
Well, it's all about earlier. The superintendent, after all, right? Oh, yes, I suppose since then the lines are down with the snow. Oh, I wonder. It's made been cut. Cut? But who could have cut it? Mr. Ralston, just how much snow are these people staying on guest house? I. We. Uh, don't really know anything about them. <laughs> Mrs. Boyle wrote from a Bournemouth hotel. Major Metcalf from an address. Where was it? A lead. Right. Um, Ran from Halstead, the case for a woman from a private hotel in Kensington, and Paragoncini, as we told you, appeared out of the blue last night. Still, I suppose they bought ration books and that sort of thing. Yes, I'll go to all that, of course, but there's not much of a nice place on that sort of evidence. But even if this maniac is trying to get here, kill us all, or one of us, we're quite safe now, because of the snow. No one can get here till it ends. Unless he's here already. Here already? Well, why not? All your guests arrived late last evening. Some hours after murder, Mr. Stanley. But not time he gets here. But except for Mr. Pavicini, they all booked beforehand. Well, why not? He's crawling for plans. Crimes. There's only been one crime. In Corvo Street. Why are you sure there will be another one here? As it will happen here. No. I hope to prevent that. It will be attempted? Yes. I can't believe it. It's so fantastic. It isn't fantastic. It's just facts. Have you got a description of what this man looks like in London? Medium height, indeterminate build, dark show coat, soft belt hat. Spoken whisper, face in by a muffler. There are three dark shoulder coats hanging up the hall there now. One of them is yours, Mr. Ralston. There are three lightish belt hats. I don't believe it. You see, it's a telephone why that worries me. If it's been cut. I must go on and get on with the vegetables. Is there extension? <clears throat> I uh, beg your pardon, did you say something? Yes, Mr. Colston. I said, is there an extension? Yes, up in our bedroom. Go and try to get there, will you?
See up here, he's getting the whole way. Yeah, suddenly, 
Have you and Mrs. Ralston screen? Mrs. Ralston was saying it. Mrs. Ralston was saying it. Why was she in the drawing room? Miss Kaysler. I was writing letters in the library. Could you feel it was online again? No, I didn't hear anything until Miss Ralston screamed. What did you do then? I came in here. <coughs> Once? I think so. <coughs> you say you writing letters at the time Mrs. Ralston screamed? Yes. Mrs. Ralston was writing in the and you came in here? Yes. Yes. But also didn't get any unfinished letters sitting on the desk of the writing table. I brought it with me! Trouble there. <laughs> <laughs> Dearest Jesse, a friend of yours, a relation. It's none of your business. Perhaps not. You know, I went to this one doing blue murder when I was writing a letter. I don't be able to take the time to pick up my unfinished letter, fold it, and place it in my pocket before we see what's the matter. You wouldn't? How interesting. Here's your better cap. You'll see you in the sentence which Mr. Walston screen. Why? Looking around, just looking around. I was looking into that kind of place under the stairs in the kitchen. Lots of junk and sports tackle. I noticed there was another door inside it, and I opened it and saw another flight of steps. I was curious, so I went on down. Nice tennis, you call. Glad you like them. Not at all. Crypt of an old monastery, I should say. Probably why they call this place Monkswell. We're not engaged in any quiet research, Major Matt Cap. We're investigating a murder. Now, Mrs. Ralston's already stated, she had a door shut with a faint creak. <coughs> that particular door shut with a creak. It could be, you know, that if we claim Mrs. Boyle, the murderer left the hall that way, put Mrs. Ralston come to the kitchen, and we're slipping to the cupboard, pulling the door out again. A lot of things could be. There would be fingerprints on the inside of the cupboard. Don't mind if they're all right. The most criminals are careful to wear gloves, aren't they? It's usual. But all criminals slip up sooner or later. I wonder, Sergeant, if that is really true. But look here. Aren't we wasting time? There's one person well, in charge of this investigation, sir. You know. Very well. But I'm Mr. Ralston. <laughs> We've got to establish opportunity, as was noted. Now let me tell you this. You all an opportunity. Or an opportunity. There are two step bases. Anyone can go up by one, come down by the other. Anyone can go to the cellars, through the cupboard door near the kitchen, come to the fight stairs into the trap door over here. The vital fact is that every one of you was alone at the time the murder was committed. But look here. You speak as though we're all under suspicion. That's absurd. In a murder case, everyone's under suspicion. But you know pretty well who killed the woman at Culver Street. <coughs> you think it's the eldest, and those three children from the farm, a mentally abnormal man who's now around 23 of age? Well, damn it all! There's only one person here who fits the bill. Yeah? <laughs> <laughs> It's not true. You're all against me. Everyone's always been against me. You're going to frame me for a murder? It's persecution! That's what it is, persecution! Yeah, steady. It's all right, Chris. Nobody's against you. Tell him it's all right. We don't frame people. Tell him you're not going to arrest him. I'm not arresting anyone. To do that, I've got to have evidence. I haven't got any evidence. Yet. I think you're crazy, Molly. Yeah, and you too. There's one person who fits the bill. And if only as a safety measure, he ought to be put under arrest. It's only fair for the rest of us. Wait, Charles, wait. Sergeant Trotter, can I, can I speak to you a minute? Certainly, Mrs. Ralston. Will the rest of you go to the dining room, please? <laughs> You too, please. I'm saying! I don't know what has come over you, Molly! Please! Yes, Mr. Walston. What is your name?
want to say to me? Sergeant Trotter, you think that this, this crazy killer is the eldest of those three boys at the farm. But you don't know that, do you? You don't actually know the thing. What we've got so far is a woman who joined her husband in ill-treating and starving those children has been killed. And the woman magistrate, responsible for placing them there, has been killed. The telephone wire makes it police headquarters has been cut. But you don't even know that. It's may have just been the snow. No. Yeah. <coughs> the line was deliberately cut. It was cut just outside by the front door I found the place. I see. Sit down, Mr. Ralston. It's all the same. You do know. I'm going by probability. It all points one direction. Mental instability. Childish mentality. Desertion from the army. The psychiatrist's report. Oh, I know, and <coughs> therefore it all seems to point to Christopher. But I don't believe it is, Christopher. There must be other possibilities. Such as? Well, how did those children any relations at all? The mother was a drunk. She died soon after the children were taken away from her. What about their father? The father was an army son serving abroad. He's alive. He's probably discharged from the army by now. You don't know where he is now? We have no information. It's very similar some time, but I can assure you, Mr. Ralston, that we take every eventuality into account. But you don't know where he may be at this minute. And if the son is mentally unstable, the father may have been unstable too. It's a possibility. If he came home after being a prisoner with the Japanese, perhaps, and having suffered terribly, if he came home and found his wife dead, and that his children had all gone through some terrible experience, and if he died through it, he might come off his head a bit and want revenge. It's only surmise. But it's possible. It is, Mr. Ralston, it's quite possible. So the murderer may be enraged or evil old. I said the police run up. Major Metcalf was rightfully upset. He really was. I saw his face. Major Metcalf? Middle aged and a soldier. He seems quite nice and perfectly normal. But it's might and show, might it? No. Or it show at all? So it's not only Christopher who's a suspect, but it's Major Metcalf as well. Any other suggestions? Well, Mr. Pirate Machine did drop a poker when I said the police run up. Mr. Pirate Machine? I know mean, he seems quite old and foreign and everything, but he might literally be as old as he looks. He moves like a much younger man, and he's definitely got made up on his face. In this case, I'll notice it too. He might be, you know, I know it sounds very melodramatic, but he might be disguised. I'm very anxious, Auntie. But should be on the surround. He seems so helpless somehow. And so unhappy. Let me take this to Smolson. I've got all puzzles in my mind. Ever since the beginning. The boy. George. The father. And someone else. There's a sister, you remember? Who? The sister? Could have been a woman. Could have been a woman. A woman. Face hidden by a mother. Still looking at a whisper. Still always seeing the sex away. Yes. Could have been a woman. Who is the sister? No, no, she'll sit all over the parts. I mean, this is quite a lie here. It's yourself, for instance. Me? You're about the right age. No, no. Don't be telling me I've got no means to check it for the moment, remember? No, these are your husband. Giles! How ridiculous! He and Christopher Wren are not your age. Your husband looks older than he is, and Christopher Wren looks young. Actually, it's very hard to tell. How much do you love your husband, Small Sin? How much do I know about Giles? Have you been see? Mary, how long? A year. Did you ask him? Where? At a dance in London, we met at a party. Did you meet his people? He hasn't any people, they're all dead. They're all dead? <laughs> <laughs> yes, you make it sound all wrong. His father was a barrister, his mother died when he was a baby. You're only saying what he told you. Yes, but... You don't have your own knowledge. It's outrageous. You'd be surprised, Wilson, how many cases valid yours without since the war. Holmes woke up. Emmy's dead. But as he's been in the Air Force, she's finished his army training. Parents did. New relations. Not to any backgrounds nowadays. You only get set on their own affairs. They meet. They marry. It used to be parents' relatives to make the inquiries and the consent between the agents. That's all they're away with. The girl just marries a man. Sometimes she's been out for a year or so. A stolen banker or an army deserter. So equally undesirable. How long have you known Giles Lawson before you married him? Just three weeks, but. In the 
don't know anything about him. That's not true. I know everything about him. You're just the sort of person he is. He's Giles. It's absolutely absurd for you to suggest that he's some horrible, crazy homicide maniac. Why, he must have been in London yesterday with a murder to place. Where was he? Here? No, he went across country to, to, to a sale to get some wine to our chickens. Who was back with him? No, it turned out to be the wrong kind. Only put him out of the not you? That's it. Now by train. This is longer by car. I tell you, Giles wasn't in London. Just a minute, Mrs. Walston. <clears throat> this was the case. Yes. I'm just like the unknown murderer. I told you I'm the one that's best for Kate admitted! You see? My mother. My mother. Yes, your mother. Everything would be alright if she hadn't died. She would have taken care of me. You can't all be looked after all your life. Things happen to you. You've got to bear them. Let's go on just as usual. I <coughs> can't do that. Yes, one can. Let 
something very bad. Something I've never forgotten. Was it to do with Giles? No, it was long before I met Giles. You must have been very young. Almost a child. Perhaps that's why it was so awful. It was horrible, horrible. I tried to put it out of my mind. I tried never to speak it. So, you're running away too. Running away from things instead of facing them. Yes, perhaps the way I am. Considering that I never saw me until yesterday, we seem to know each other rather well. Yes, it's odd, isn't it? I don't know. I suppose it's a sort of sympathy between us. Anyway, you think I ought to stick it out? Well, frankly, what else can you do? I might pinch the sergeant's keys. I can see quite well. You'd be frightfully stupid. You'd be almost like admitting gifts. Sergeant Trotter thinks I'm guilty. He really doesn't. At least, we don't know what the Sergeant thinks. I hate him, I hate him, I hate him. <gasps> Sergeant Trotter, he puts things into your head. Things that aren't true that can't possibly be true. What is all this? I don't believe it. I won't believe it. But won't you believe? On. Up with it. You see that? Yes, sir. Uh, what is it? Yesterday's paper. A London paper. It was in Charles' pocket. Charles was in guilty London yesterday. Well, if he was here all day. But he wasn't. He went off in a car to look for chicken wire. He couldn't find it. Well, that's all right. Probably he did go up to London after all. Then why shouldn't he tell me he did? Let me tell you, Chris, he all round the countryside. Perhaps with the news of this murder. He didn't know about the murder. Did he? Did he? Good Lord. Surely you didn't think. The sergeant doesn't I don't know what the sergeant thinks. He can make you think things about people. You ask yourself questions, you hint it out. You feel that someone you love and know where they might be. A stranger. That's what happens in a nightmare. You're somewhere in the middle of friends and suddenly you look at their faces and they're not your friends anymore. Different people. Just pretending. Perhaps you can't trust anybody. Perhaps everyone's a stranger. I seem to be interrupting. Something. No, you were just talking. I must go to the kitchen now. There's five potatoes. I must do the spinach. I'll come give you a hand. No, you won't. Tet a tet. I'm very healthy things at present. You keep out of the kitchen. And you stay away from my wife. But really, look here. You stay away from my wife, Ren. She's not going to be your next victim. So, that's what you think of me? I've already said so. <laughs> How it, darling? There's a killer loose in this house. And it seems to be you fit the bill. I'm not the only one to fit the bill. I don't see who else does. How blind are you? Would you just pretend to be blind? I tell you, I'm worrying about my wife's safety. So am I. I'm not going to leave you alone with her. What the hell are these ghosts? I'm not going. These ghosts, but these are neat. <laughs> I shan't be far away. Molly, what is all this? Perfectly prepared to shut yourself up in a room with some, some homicidal maniac? He isn't. You only have to look at him to see that he's born. He isn't. He's just unhappy. I tell you, Giles, he isn't dangerous. I'd know if he was dangerous. 
At any rate, I can look after myself. That's what Mrs. Boyle said. Shucks, look here. What is there between you and that, that, that wretch boy? What do you mean by between us? I'm sorry for him, that's all. Perhaps you met him before. Perhaps you suggested to him to come here and you both pretend to meet for the first time. Yeah, all cooked up between you, was it? Giants, have you gone out of your mind? Dang, suggest this thing. Rather odd, isn't it? That you should come and stay at an out of the way place like this? You know, all of them, this case so they made met Catherine his boy. Shoot, I read once in the newspaper that these homicidal cases were able to attract women. Yeah. Looks as though it's true. Where did you first know him? How long has this been going on? You're being absolutely ridiculous. I never set eyes on Christopher Wren until he arrived yesterday. That's what you said. But perhaps you've been running up to London to meet him on the side. You know perfectly well that I haven't been up to London in weeks. You haven't been up to London in weeks? Is that so? What on earth do you mean? It's quite true. Is it? Then what's this? This is one of the gloves you were wearing yesterday. You dropped it. I picked it up while talking to Sergeant Trotter this afternoon. Do you know what's inside of it? <laughs> A London busting it. So it seems you didn't only go to the countryside yesterday. You went to London. All right. I whilst know. I was safely racing around the countryside. You were racing around the countryside. Come on now, admit it! You went to London! Alright! I went to London. There. So did you! What? So did you! You brought back an evening paper! Where did you get a hold of that? It was in your overcoat pocket! Anyone could have put it there, did they? No, you were in London! Wait! Right. Yes! I went to London. But I didn't go to meet a woman there. Didn't you? Are you sure you did? What do you mean? No, it didn't come near me. Molly, what is the matter with you? Don't touch me. Did you go to London yesterday to meet Christopher Wren? To be a fool, of course I did. Then why did you go? I shan't tell you that. Perhaps now I've forgotten why I went. Molly, what has come over you? You're, you're different all of a sudden. I feel as though I don't know you anymore. Perhaps you never did know me. We've been married how long? A year? But you really do not know anything about me. I've done or thought or felt or suffered before you knew me. Molly, you're crazy. All right, I'm crazy. Why not? Perhaps it's fun to be crazy. What the hell are you now, saying? Now. <laughs> I do hope you don't feel enough to say a little more than you need. What is wrong with this? Lovers and squabs. Lovers, girls, yeah. that's the issue. Quite so. Quite so. I know exactly how you feel. I went through all this myself when I was a younger man. Jonas, Jonas is the old sense. You two are not getting very long, I imagine. It's no business, as you all have a genie. No, no, no business at all. I just came to say this, I cannot find the skis. I'm afraid he's getting very annoyed. Christopher! What's that? He wants to know if you by any chance to move them, Mr. Austin. No, of course not. Mr. Austin? Mrs. Austin? Have either of you removed my skis back from the cupboard where we put them? Certainly not. Somebody's <laughs> taken them. What made you happen to look for them? The snow's still on. We need help. Reinforcements. So when the ski with the police station of Walker Hampton report that on situation. You know, you can't, dear dear. It seems someone's made certain that you can't do that. But there could be another reason. Yes, could what? It? Somebody <coughs> wanted to get away. What did you mean when you said Christopher just now? No. No. Our young architect is hooked, it has he? Very, very interesting. Is this true, Mr. Holston? Thank goodness you haven't gone after all. Mr. Wren, have we taken my skis? Your skis, Sergeant? No. Why should I? Mrs. Walston seemed to think that... Mr. Wren is very fond of skiing, and I thought he might have taken them to get a little... 
exercise. Exercise? Now listen here, you people. This is a serious matter. Someone's room might only chance to be the outside world. Almost ever settled here at once. I think the serious one has gone upstairs. Now get to Chickens never sat on toast. Tigris made with foie gras, served with a very thin brush of bacon, and a fresh sous-son of mustard? No. I will come with you to the kitchen, and we will see what we can concoct together. A charming occupation. I'm helping my wife, Mr. Paddy, Jimmy. Your husband is afraid for you. But naturally, under the circumstances, he doesn't fancy your being alone with me. It's my sadistic tendencies he fears, not my dishonorable ones. Alas, what an inconvenience the husband always is. <coughs> I regret that. I'm sure, Jazz. He's very wise. Take no chances. Can I prove to you, or to him, or to our doggy, Sergeant over there, that I'm in fact not a homicidal maniac? It's so difficult to prove a negative. But suppose it's that I really am. Dude! <laughs> but such a gay little tune, is it not? She cut out her dish with the carving knife, snick, snick, snick. <laughs> yes? Stop frightening my wife at once! It's silly of me. You see, I found her. Her face was all purple. I can't forget it. I know. It is difficult to forget things. 
You're not really the forgetting kind. I must go. The food, dinner, the bed is finished. The potatoes are all going to pieces. Please, Giles. What did you say to the lady to upset her, sir? Me, son. <clears throat> oh, just a little innocent fun. I've always been fond of a little joke. It was a nice one. This one's not so nice. No. I do wonder what you mean by that. <clears throat> I've been so wondering about you as well. Indeed. Yes. <coughs> what that car was, how oh, it's really so drink. So conveniently. Inconvenient. Don't you mean that? That's rather depends the way we're looking at things. <coughs> so where were you bound for last night when we had this accident? Oh, I was on my way to see a friend. In this neighborhood? Not so. Very far from here. What's the name and address of this friend? Oh, really, something. Does that matter now? I mean, does it have anything to do with this predicament? Well, we always like to have the fullest information. What did you say your friend's name was? I didn't say. No. You didn't say. It seems you're not going to say. Now that's very interesting. But there could be so many reasons. And a more. Discretion with these jealous husbands. A little old. She ran out the ladies of your time life, aren't you, sir? My dear sergeant, I'm perhaps not quite so old as I look. That's exactly what I've been thinking. What? It's not as old as you try to look. There's lots of people nowadays trying to younger than they are. <coughs> if somebody goes about trying to make themselves look older, does make one ask himself why? Having asked questions of so many people, you ask questions of yourself as well? Tell me, isn't that overdoing things? I might get an answer for myself. I don't need money from you. Well, well, try again. That is, if you have any more questions to ask. One or two. Where were you coming from last night? That is simple. From London. What? Address in London? I always stay at the Ritz Hotel. <coughs> Very nice too, I'm sure. What's your permanent address? I dislike permanency. What's your business or profession? I play the markets. Stockbroker? No, no, you misunderstand me. You enjoy this little game, aren't you? I'm sure yourself too. Well, I wouldn't be too sure. We'll mix up in a murder case and don't you forget. Murder isn't just fun and games. Not even this murder? Dear <laughs> <laughs> me, you are very serious, Sergeant. I always thought policing had no sense of humor. Is this investigation over for the moment? For the moment? Yes. Thank you so much. I will return to the drama and see if I can find those seats there. Perhaps someone is hitting them inside the piano. Just a minute, please. Are well, you speaking to me? Yes. Perhaps you can just sit down. Well, what do you want? May have heard some of the questions I was asking Mr. Pyrochini. I heard them. I'd like to have a little information about you as well. What do you want to know? Full name, please. Leslie Margaret Catherine Casewell. Catherine? I spell it with a K. Quite so, address? Villa Mariposa, Pine Dior, Mallorca. That's in Italy. It's in Ireland. A Spanish island. I see. English dress. Care of Morgan's Bank, Ladenhall Street. Any other English dress? No. How long have you been in England? A week. Have you been saying since your arrival? At the Ledbury Hotel, Knightsbridge. What brought you amongst one man? I wanted somewhere quiet in the country. How long do you or did you propose to remain here? Until I finish what I came here <coughs> What was that? And what was that? Eh? What 
what you came here to do. I beg your pardon, I was thinking of something else. You haven't answered my question. I really don't see it, or why I should. It's a matter that concerns me alone, a strictly private affair. All the same, Miss Nisha. No, I don't think we'll argue about it. To my sense, your age. Not in the least. It's on my passport. I'm 24. 24? You were thinking I look older. That's quite true. So you want this country to be bounced for you? My bank will reassure you as to my financial position. I can also refer to you as a solicitor, a very discreet man. I'm not in a position to offer you social records. I've lived most of my life abroad. In Mallorca? In Mallorca. And other places. Were you born abroad? No, I left England when I was 13. You know, Miss Kinsel, I can't quite make you out. Does it matter? I don't know. What are you doing here? Seems to worry you. It does worry me. You say what's wrong when you were 13? 12, 13, thereabouts. What's your name case for then? It's my name now. What's, what's your name then? Come on, tell me. What are you trying to prove? I once thought your name was you left England. It's a long time ago. I've forgotten. There are some things one doesn't forget. Possibly. Unhappiness, despair. I dare say! What's your real name? I told you, Leslie Margaret Catherine Casewell! What the hell are you doing here? I... I... Oh God, I wish to God I'd never come here! I always thought police weren't allowed to give people the third degree. Well, I've been a bit of in this case, well. You seem to have upset her. What did he do? No, it's... it's nothing. It's just all this murder. It's, it's so horrible. It came over me suddenly. I'll go up to my room. What can't you believe? Six impossible things before breakfast. <laughs> like the Red Queen. Oh, yes, it's rather like that. <coughs> Dear me, you look as though you'd seen a ghost. Well, I've seen something I've seen long ago. Right as that I've been. But I think now I may be somewhere. The police have a clue. Yes, Mr. Wren. At last, the police have a clue. I want to. Everyone has settled here again. Do you know where they are? Giles and Molly are in the kitchen. I have been helping Major Metcalf to look for your skis. We've looked in the most entertaining places, but to no avail. I don't know where Padovacini is. I'll meet him. You with the others. Mr. Padovacini! <coughs> Mr. Potter-Cheney! Mr. Potter-Cheney! Yes, Sergeant? Oh, what can I do for you? Oh, wait. Little boy policeman has lost his keys and doesn't know where to find them. Leave them alone and they'll come home dragging a murderer behind them. What is all this? <coughs> Sit down, Major. Mrs. Ralston. Must I come now? It's very inconvenient. There are more important things than meals, Mrs. Ralston. Mrs. Boyle, for instance, was the eating of the meal. That's a very tactless way of putting it, Sergeant. I'm sorry. So I want cooperation. I intend to get it. Mr. Ralston, we go upstairs and grab Miss Casewell. We'll see up in her room. Ten on you for a few minutes. Have your skis been found, Sergeant? No. Yeah. I have shrewd suspicion who took them in a while you're taking. I won't say more at the present moment. Please, don't. I always think the explanation should be said for that exciting final chapter. Yes. You know? Isn't. Again, sir. Isn't it? 
Now there I think you are wrong. I think it is a game. To some. You think the murderer is enjoying himself? Maybe? Maybe. What is happening? Sit down this case well, Mr. Ralston. You all pay attention, please. You may remember, it's after murder Mrs. Boyle. I took statements from all of you. Those statements were positions at the time the murder was committed. The statements were as follows. Mrs. Ralston in the kitchen. Mr. Padrocini in the drawing room. Mr. Ralston upstairs. Mr. Wren, ditto. Mr. Casewell in the library. Major Metcalf in the cellars. Correct. <coughs> Those are your statements. I know it's checking these statements. They may be true. They may not. To put it quite clear, five of those statements were true, and one was false. Which one? Five of you were telling the truth. One of you was lying. I have a plan that may help you discover which of you is lying to me. And if I discover who the liar is, then I know who the murderer is. Not necessarily. Someone may have lied for some other reason. I rather doubt that. But what's the idea? You just said you had no means of checking these statements. No. But supposing everyone was to do his actions a second time. Ah, that old chestnut. Great instruction of the crime. That's a foreign idea. Not reconstruction of the crime. A reconstruction of the movement of apparently innocent persons. And what do you expect to learn from all that? <coughs> You'll forgive me if I don't make that quite clear at the present moment. You want a repeat performance? Yes, Mr. Ralston, I do. It's a trap. What do you mean it's a trap? It is a trap. I know it is. I only want people to do exactly what they did before. But I don't see. I simply can't see. What can you possibly hope to find out by just making people do the things they did before? I think it's just... Nonsense. Do you? Mr. Wren? Well, you can count me out. I'm too busy in the kitchen. I can't count anybody out. One might think you're all guilty by the looks of it. Why are you all so many? Of course. Whatever you say goes, Sergeant. We'll cooperate. Right, Molly? Very well. Wren? Casewell? Yes. Parancini? Oh, yes. I consent. Metcalf? Yes. Are we to do exactly what we did before. The same actions we performed. Yes. Then I shall go to the dorm room and with one finger, I will pick up the signature tool and a murderer. <laughs> Not quite so fast, Mr. Mrs. Ralston, do you know how to play the piano? Yes, I do. And do you know the two and three by mice? Don't we all know it? Then we pick up the piano with one finger, just as Mr. Pirocini did? Yes. Good. Go to the drawing room and sit at the piano and be ready to play when I give the signal. But, Sergeant, I am assured that we reduced to repeat our former roles. The same actors we performed. Yes. But not necessarily by the same person. I don't see the, the point. point. There is a point. It's a means of checking up on your statements. And maybe one statement in particular. Now, do you all pay attention, please? Outside each of you in your stations. Mr. Wren, will you kindly go to the kitchen and watch Mrs. Mrs. Walton's meal? You're very Fond of cooking, I believe. Mr. Pagrucini, we go to Mr. Renzo. By the back, is the most convenient way. Major Metcalf, we go to Mr. Ralston's room. Check the extension, extension telephone up there. Miss Casewell, will you please go down to the cellars? Mr. Ren will show you the way. Unfortunately, I had someone to reproduce my own actions. I'm sorry to ask about you, but would you, Mr. Ralston, trace the telephone wire out that window around to the front door? Not the chilly job, but you're probably the toughest person here. And what are you going to do? I? You've been acting part of Mrs. Boyle. Take your dinner risk, aren't you? You'll stay in your position until you're called. Parlor games. No objection to wearing my coat? I should advise it, sir.
Take my torch, sir. Will you close the window behind me? Oh, yes. Georgie, 
Now you're coming with me. Where are we going? It's all right, Georgina. I'm taking you somewhere where they'll look after you and see that you won't do any more harm. Rolston! Rolston! Molly! Molly! Are you all right? Darling! Darling! Charles! Do you ever would have it was Charter? He's mad. Quite mad. Yes, but you... I was mixed up in it all. I told him the school. It wasn't my fault, but he thought I could have saved that child. You should have told me. I wanted to forget. Everything's under control. You're unconsciously with the sedative. His sister's looking after him. Poor fellow's as mad as a hatter, of course. I've had my suspicions of him all along. You did? Didn't you believe he was a policeman? I knew he wasn't a policeman. You see, Miss Ralston, I'm a policeman. <laughs> <laughs> yes. As soon as we got a hold of that notebook with Monswell Mannerman in it, we saw his vital to have someone on the spot. We put to him into Metcalf and agreed to let me take his place. I couldn't quite understand it when Charlotte turned up. And Case Man is his sister. Yes, it seems she recognized him just before this last business. She didn't know what to do about it, but fortunately, it came to me just in time. Ah, well, it started a thaw. Help should be here pretty soon. Oh, by the way, Miss Rawson, I'll remove those skis. I've hit them on top of the four-poster. <laughs> <laughs> and I thought it was par of a cheap. I gather they'll examine the car of his rather carefully. I shouldn't be surprised if they find a thousand or so Swiss watches. Yes, that's his line of business, a nasty little bit of goods. Molly, I really thought I was... Charles, there. what were you doing in London yesterday? Darling, uh, I was buying you an anniversary present. We've been married just here today. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I went to And I didn't want you to do. No. <laughs> they're cigars. I do feel they're all right. Darling, how sweet of you. They're splendid. <laughs> I'll smoke them. What's my present? Oh, I forgot all about your present. Miss Rolston, Miss Rolston, there's a tablesmell of burning coming from the kitchen. 